What are red flags for roommates? Mom moves him in while he watches. Mom sets his room up while he stares into his phone. Mom shops grocery and cooks it for him while he complains he's hungry. Mom fills a fridge with pre-cooked meals while he eats. Mom cleans up everything and leaves. Congratulations. Now you're his mom. Edit, to be clear. I didn't do anything for him. I made it clear that regardless of what he thought. I wasn't his mom. And the lease bring what it is. It lasted a year. This was years ago back in college days. And I'm a parent now. It does take a conscious effort to break away from doing things for your kids because it becomes such a routine. So I can empathize. To a degree. But by the time you're in college, you should be able to survive if you're dropped within walking distance of a Walmart. Oh. Man. I have a couple. All gained from painful experience. If someone. Before they live with you. Constantly comments on how clean your slash someone's place is. When in reality it's just normal and not that clean at all. Take this as a sign that you have very different standards of cleanliness. A little more personal. But if the person has a history of many friendships lasting less than one year. Without excuses like moving or switching jobs. Or seems to have a long trail of people that they no longer speak to. Or all their old friends are described as crazy psychos. Or seems like the greatest person in the world, but inexplicably has no friends whatsoever. If someone tells you who they are. Listen. For example. When my old roommate said casually in conversation. Yeah. My mom and my sisters don't think that I'm capable of feeling empathy. Like I'm a sociopath. They used to say that a lot. The same roommate also once told me that she's never felt guilt before. And didn't know what it felt like. She's almost 30. She also had a restraining order served on her a couple days after she moved in. Red flags. If friends of your potential roommate come to you and ask you if you've really thought this through and mention that maybe you don't know this person as well as you think you do, listen to those people. If you've noticed that this person doesn't seem to respect the property or personal space of others, those are the biggest ones I've experienced. Writes their name on their food in the fridge. And eats your food because you didn't write your name on yours. In my experience, if you live with a stranger, then sometimes there's a mutual understanding to be on good behavior. You may never be close, but it may not be an awful situation, either. Sometimes it doesn't work this way, but in my experience it does a surprising amount of time. If you live with a friend's. Expect every one of their flaws to go up by a multiple of at least 5x. They always are down to drink. Guess what? Your house is going to be a party house. Is their car a mess? Guess what? Your house is going to be a disaster. Is their homework always late? Don't be surprised if the rent is late. Too. And with family. Make that 10, 20x. I knew a guy who always on the lazier side that moved in with his cousin. He then proceeded to stop paying rent and looking for a job. Be very cautious moving in with family. If their smell enters the room before they do and sticks around after they leave. Similar to a romantic partner. If all of their previous roommates were crazy slash inexplicably hated them slash forced them to move out slash sociopaths slash asshole slash satan worshippers. That's a huge red flag. Differing political beliefs. I'm not talking oh I disagree. Let's have a slightly heated debate. Those roommates are cool. The ones I'm talking about are the. If you don't agree with me, you want another holocaust people. Do they have no friends? Do they have no friends? And insist on a curfew. Did they move in with a barbell and 45 plates? But the whole house is hardwood floors. And they live on the second floor. Are you dropping weights on the fucking would you idiot? Have they suggested everyone throws money together for a house gun in case of ghetto stuff? The trash is too heavy to take out. Female roommates will do this. Is there limited fridge space and suddenly their fuck buddy just moves in and needs 7 different kinds of mustard? Do they try to fuck the other roommates while? Their so is gone. Are the other roommates too awkward to actually say anything? Is there a couch guy? Is the couch guy always able to find money for booze and weed, but rent is always an awkward conversation? Are they struggling with their sexuality? 
Are they taking it out on a rumored of a different gender? Did they threaten to call the cops on a house party that hasn't even happened yet? Every time I have accepted food from someone in a living situation it comes to bite me in the ass. Beware rumored bearing gifts. If someone decides the best way to communicate is via passive-aggressive post-it notes placed strategically about the apartment, then you should consider finding a new place. I'm talking about you, Shaddy. If a potential roommate says they expect the apartment to stay presentably clean that's a good thing, but if that potential roommate says that and lives in a sty, run away. Happened to me, and turns out the guy never had to lift a finger cause his mom. And then XGF would always clean for him, so he expected things to be clean. But didn't expect to have to contribute, and would give me attitude when I tried to push him to do his share. His retort. Dude. With all due respect. I agreed to live with you, so you should appreciate it by doing the cleaning. My retort. Dude. With all due respect. Grow the fuck up. Or move the fuck out. I'm ashamed to say that he got another girlfriend and she did all of his cleaning. We stop fighting about it, and they are still together so. Great friend. Shit roommate. I'd live with her again though, she liked to bake. If your cat loves them more than it loves you. When they bring their dates back to your room without telling you in advance, then lock you out in the hallway, so they can have privacy. Okay now. Before I make my final decision I, uh, I just want to make sure our personalities match. Okay. So I made up a little test. Now, I'm gonna say a word, and then you say the first thing that comes to mind. I can do that. Okay. Here we go. Below. Fight. Very good. Okay. G. String. Excellent. Okay, um. Doggy. Kitten. Oh. Sorry. No. 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 So close though. But. Bye bye. Kind of too late to call, but if there's a fight on move-in day, the whole thing is going to be a fight. Also, if one person tries to impose a cleaning schedule or rotation, these things are always doomed for disaster I find. Because then there's documented blame to go around, if one person slacks off, even if it's for a good reason, overloaded with schoolwork, extreme bout of sickness, works 12 hours slash day, etc. Close bracket. Finally, if she disappears for 4 hours and returns bragging about spending $200 on professionally done glue on nails one day, then has her grandparents over the next day bringing food because she's broke. She has absolutely no understanding of time or money and will not be able to empathize with you when you say you can't afford the $10 it costs to buy a pack of toilet paper because your part-time Walmart job barely covers your share of the rent and your bus pass. She will also eat your food despite labeling and try to flush hard stalks of celery down the toilet. Looking for a pen in my underwear drawer. Drinking habits are a big one. If you have a roommate who's alright sober, but always a problem drunk, consider having to deal with that every time. I've had roommates who were great, except their drinking was too much. Another is expectations. My old roommate thought we'd be that household that goes out every weekend and has grill nights. I just wanted someone to pay rent. While it didn't cause major problems with me, our third roommate was roped in a lot of social events he didn't like and caused a great deal of tension. This is very minor compared to some of the other things in this thread. But it has prevented me from committing murder. Ask if they own any nonstick cooker. If they do, ask to see it. If it's not all scratched to hell, it's probably safe to leave yours in the kitchen for shared use. Otherwise, if it has a single scratch in it, or if they don't own any, yours needs to stay under lock and key. If they don't have the same cleanliness standards as you, things will be a little rough. It will eventually lead to either someone doing all the cleaning work, whoever the cleanest of the bunch is, or lead to some big argument as things come to a head. Unfortunately for me, I had this chameleon of a roommate. He changed his habits based on the laziest person in the room. When he and I first moved in together, we both kept things very clean. And I thought we had similar standards because I had seen where he lived before several times. Then our third roommate moved in who is the dirtiest person on the planet. Basically we let him move in as a favor to him. Because he needed a place to stay. 
and we thought how bad can it be. It was fucking awful. My original room had basically stopped cleaning, because so and so doesn't clean either, making things 2 to 1 against my standard of cleanliness, which is a pretty average slash normal standard emo. The house got so disgusting that my girlfriend basically stopped coming over because of how gross it was. I eventually confronted them, had some huge shouting match because one of them got their egos bruised, and the friendship hasn't been the same since. I stayed until 11pm cleaning that place on the last day there. Simply so I could get my security deposit back. They had left at like 3 or 4pm. Which leads me to another point, if possible. Don't be the one who put up the security deposit. That person is the only one who has something to lose, based on the condition of the place. If possible, split the deposit equally. Alcoholic. These people are rough to live with. One of my roommates a few years ago was an alcoholic, and not in the I have a few beers with dinner on a Tuesday way. I mean she would guzzle full glasses of gin and tonics every day of the week to the point where she couldn't bike home, and I would have to talk her back to the apartment at 2am when she called. She purposely did not eat in order to get as wasted as possible, and would vomit clear liquid that turned the toilet bowls a weird shade of grey if left too long. If they are not mature and responsible, you're gonna have a rough time. It sucks. But be as incompassionate as possible. This same room had got locked out one time. It was New Year's Eve. I rushed home to let her in. From that day on she lost her keys an average of twice a week and would call me, drunk off her ass, to let her in. If I did not instantly drop everything I was doing and rush to her aid she would call, text, and FaceTime me until my phone battery died. Never lost her wallet credit cards, or bike lock, just her keys. Best room at Zomachia. Competent. And leave you alone.